The unified champion Anthony Joshua will square off against unbeaten top 10 contender Jarrell Miller on June 1st at Madison Square Garden in New York in what will be Joshua's first fight outside the United Kingdom. Much of this fight and the way it could pan out comes down to the known unknown surrounding the trash-talking Miller, who hasn't been as battle-tested as many would like. With that in mind, let's begin. Buckle it. Let's go. Number one. Just how good Jarrell Miller is, it's the million dollar question. Or in his case, for what he's getting paid for this fight, the millions dollar question. Miller has been carefully matched on his way up in the heavyweight division in the past two years, fed a steady diet of fading former title contenders or overmatched opponents, including Marius Wok, Johan Dorper, Thomas Adamek, and most recently unproven prospect Bogdan Dinu. Miller also made former Deontay Wilder opponent Gerald Washington quit when they fought in mid-2017, and this is arguably his best win. The doubt surrounding Miller and how good he is has remained primarily due to his most recent fights against Dinu and Adamek, which was seen as a step down from Washington Wok and Duopa. Also in 2018, when he was considered on the brink of a title shot, he refused to fight Kubrat Pulev for a guaranteed shot at Anthony Joshua's IBF belt. He refused it on the grounds of money and location, not wanting to travel to Bulgaria. So there has been a perception among fans that he was doing enough and just enough to limp to a title shot with Joshua, or he'd fight a secondary opponent for a secondary title in the WBA, where he would be considered favourite to beat Manuel Cha or Trevor Bryan. There is, though, clearly something there with Jarrell Miller with the American regarded widely as a top 10 contender, with some like promoter Eddie Hearn calling him even top 5. He comes forward, he throws a huge volume of punches for a heavyweight, and this combined with his relentless pressure has been key to breaking opponents down, some like Washington quitting, or others like Johan Dorpa only able to cope with it for 6 rounds before being ground down and battered for the remaining rounds. It's a unique blend of pressure and style, and the only other current heavyweight who comes close to matching this is Miller's friend and fellow contender Adam Kovnatsky, who Miller has sparred over 1,000 rounds with since they were teenagers. The constant punches and pressure is in some ways almost like a form of defence, and opponents have little breathing room to get a break, set up their own work or adjust as they look to deal with the punches that come raining in. Not all of those punches are hard, but they are there. Miller showed against Dinu when he was more circumspect early in that fight looking to pick his spots, pick his shots. He was able to be easily outboxed and he was almost hit at will. And when he flicked the switch, went back to his volume and pressure game. He overwhelmed Dinu, so maintaining pressure and volume will be key against Joshua. It's hard to really know though how good is Jarrell Miller, because on June 1st, that's likely when we will find out, truly find out, when he faces a champion in their prime who hits harder and is better than anyone he's currently faced. Number two. Jarrell Miller has been credited by some fans and his co-promoters as having an iron jaw. But how good is his chin? Based on recent fights, it's hard to say. No one has really been hitting him flush and several times. Gerald Washington did though land a few telling right hands, but after a moment or two, Miller was able to shake it off and keep coming. But none of Miller's opponents hit nearly as hard as Anthony Joshua, who has knocked out opponents who were said to have iron jaws, Kevin Johnson and Alexander Povetkin being examples. Miller, of course, has not always been a boxer, having stints in other combat sports like kickboxing, where he held up to the rigours of being kicked in the head. Much like Joseph Parker was marketed for his own Joshua fight as having a granite chin, so too is Miller. But like Parker, we truly won't know how he will fare until he takes a massive punch. And given Miller is open to being hit, no doubt Joshua will be putting his chin to the test, and it could be that Miller is caught with multiple combinations early on. And how he reacts, it'll be key to how this fight goes. How good Miller's chin is, it does remain an open question for me. Number three. Jarrell Miller's stamina is a big part of his success in the heavyweight division and shouldn't be understated because without it, he would be unable to sustain the pressure and volume of punches that we're used to seeing. It could prove to be key to his chances of winning this fight. If Miller can sustain what will likely be an onslaught of Joshua's vicious straight punches, 
uppercuts and hooks, he will no doubt look to continue pressuring Joshua as he tires, which he has done in previous fights after expending a lot of early energy. Miller's co-promoter Greg Cohen says Miller is still going to be there in the middle rounds when Joshua starts losing steam. And sooner or later, he says, Miller will hit Joshua like he's never been hit before, and it's going to be all over. So the strategy is clear. Miller is going to look to soak up punishment early on that Joshua throws at him. He'll keep coming, and he'll look to wear Joshua out before taking him out. So Miller's stamina, it's a key ingredient to this plan working. But there are no guarantees Miller can keep coming if he's sustaining vicious blows early and often, which are draining his energy. And that is a scenario we really haven't seen Miller in thus far. Number four. If pressure, volume, and stamina are keys to a Miller win, his weight is surely the fourth prong to his arsenal. Miller carries his 300 plus pounds remarkably well for a guy who's only six foot four. He doesn't look sloppy fat like many others who weigh much less. He uses that bulk to impose himself on his opponents. And on fight night, he could outweigh Anthony Joshua by as much as 70 pounds, coming in at around 315 pounds. That has been his most recent weight there or thereabouts. There is an argument to say that being 300 plus pounds against Dinu and Adamek is one thing, but an entirely different matter against the unified champion. But somehow Miller has seemingly stumbled on a formula that works for him. And despite piling on the pounds in recent years, it really has had zero impact on his performance and more importantly, his stamina, which has amazingly been unaffected. And when he dropped down to 283 pounds for the Marius Wok fight in late 2017, after that fight he said he felt weak and he would be bulking back up, which he has subsequently done, and then some bringing up career-high weights in 2018. Miller may well be able to use his heft to help tire out Joshua in clinches or if he's leaning on him on the ropes, or more broadly as part of his come forward efforts designed to slow Joshua down through the mid-rounds. Number five. Let's talk about punching power of both fighters. The knock on Miller from many fans has been he appears to lack real punching power, elite punching power at the top of the division. Many of his knockout wins have come through accumulation and wearing his opponents down. His two most recent fights are an exception to that, stopping Thomas Adamek in two rounds and Bogdan Dinu in four rounds. But they were showcase fights designed to make Miller look good, like an explosive puncher, and help build what was a relatively low profile with casual fans. So how much can we read into those performances? It's debatable. Adam Mackey was a completely rinsed 41-year-old, and Dinu, an unproven prospect who looked like he wanted out as soon as it started getting tough. Joshua has arguably been hit by bigger punches than Jarrell Miller, so don't expect a one-punch knockout if Miller is to win. Joshua, meanwhile, he has proven to have elite punching power in the heavyweight division and he has more one-punch power than anyone Miller has faced. And also, he has the ability to put harder combinations, harder hitting combinations together than anyone Miller has faced as well. And because Jarrell Miller is also relatively open to being hit most of the time, and he doesn't move his head a lot, he could end up eating a lot of punches from Anthony Joshua. And if Joshua can rein in accurate, hard-hitting shots on a frequent basis, he could not only rack up rounds early on and disrupt Miller's rhythm, he could also hurt him. Number six. If Miller does truly have an eye and chin and he keeps coming forward, it may take Anthony Joshua several rounds to make inroads and start breaking him down, just as it did against Alexander Povetkin. It won't be Joshua's first time facing a pressure fighter, but it will be his first time fighting one that outweighs him by 60 to 70 pounds and throws a massive volume of punches. That will be new. And just as he did against Alexander Povetkin, expect Joshua to utilize movement at times, pick his spots to trade with Miller, and expect him to be looking to catch Miller on the way in with big uppercuts, straight rights, and hooks. Anthony Joshua will have the reach advantage in this fight. A key to slowing down Miller will likely be working him to the body, which not many of his opponents have done to any real extent thus far. But if Joshua can get Miller's respect early on with a big punch or a series of punches, it could have a huge bearing on how this fight plays out. Joshua is used to dictating the pace, dictating the action, 
and Miller potentially may look to block some punches with his face to keep coming at Joshua and throw him off kilter, throw him out of his rhythm. In the Joseph Parker fight, there were a couple of instances where a charging Parker made Anthony Joshua back up in a hurry, and he didn't look entirely comfortable doing so. Joshua may have to contend with the charging Miller at times, and how he reacts to this will be important. But no doubt, all of these permutations will be played out and practiced in sparring. Number 7 in recent fights, Anthony Joshua's weight has also been a topic of scrutiny, and Joshua and his team have admitted they were looking for the right mix of speed, stamina and power. There has been some suggestion from some fans that maybe Joshua should bulk up a bit to deal with Miller's extra heft, but the trade-off there could be stamina, which you will need against an unrelenting pressure fighter in Jarrell Miller should it go deeper into the fight and Miller could look to exploit a tiring Joshua if his stamina begins to fade. Joshua weighed 245 pounds for his most recent fight, and around this weight could well prove again to be about right to pace himself if the fight goes deep. The other disadvantage of Joshua bulking up is his movement was generally regarded as not being as good when he was in the 250 to 254 pound range. Number 8 Another factor to consider is this fight is an away fight for Joshua. The first time in his career he will not be fighting on home soil, and he's fighting in what's regarded as the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden. Whether he likes it or not, there's always pressure on Joshua to perform, and in particular deliver knockouts. Before the Alexander Povetkin fight, Joshua himself said he felt the pressure to deliver a knockout after fighting to a dull decision against Joseph Parker and getting what many saw as an early stoppage against Carlos Takam. Joshua in this fight is trying to make his mark on America, grow himself into a bigger worldwide sporting figure. The pressure to perform is huge, and the fact it's his first fight in America amplifies that people expect a knockout. It will be important for Joshua not to get overawed by the occasion, and starting well is key to that. Otherwise, Miller, a significant underdog in this fight, could take advantage and settle into his fight plan, which Joshua won't want him to do. Number 9. Who will win this fight? Anthony Joshua rightly goes in the favourite for this fight, having been battle-tested against some of the best in the heavyweight division, defending his various belts multiple times. But because of the known unknowns surrounding Miller, it's hard to definitively say that Joshua is going to knock him out, although my prediction is for Joshua to break Miller down over a number of rounds and eventually stop him in rounds 7 or 8. But that is my best guess on the information that I have. And because Miller hasn't truly been tested by an elite fighter or what people regard as an elite fighter, it's difficult to say whether he will come better than advertised or be beaten easily in three rounds and labelled a hype job. But if Miller can withstand the punches, impose himself on Joshua and try to wear him down over a number of rounds, he definitely has a shot in this fight. But it's a big if because if he can't do what he says he can do, he'll lose this fight. But if he does win, the heavyweight world would be turned on its head. Jarrell Miller is a heavy underdog in this fight. Number 10. Should Anthony Joshua come through this fight, be it an early KO or a hard fought battle, you know, on points, how much credit will he get for a win? Some commentators like heavyweight great Lennox Lewis have already dismissed it, saying it's not a true test for Joshua, that he f should have been fighting Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury, and that he gains nothing by fighting Miller. And there is some fan sentiment that supports this view. But it must be remembered that Jarrell Miller is a top 10 opponent, and the only one who would sign on to fight Joshua after negotiations had broken down with Dillian White and negotiations never really got off the ground with Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder who are fighting each other in a rematch. But there is enough interest and enough interesting storylines to keep many fans interested in how this one will pan out. And many do want to know how good is Jarrell Miller? Is he a legit force or another contender who's looking for his Joshua payday?